Y'all need to feel this about yourself. Here comes the, the boom. Y'all don't really want. Y'all need to feel that about yourself. Hallelujah. Highly motivated and charged to inspire. I am blessed to bless and be the best because the greater one is for me, with me, and in me. Everything that I do, I succeed. I believe and therefore I speak and God has promised to manifest the words to come forth in my life. I am Dr. Tuesday Tate. I am your vision consultant here to help you bring your vision into focus. Today we are going to talk about some things that are just specific to vision. That is what I do uh, as uh, we, I want to just kind of talk about some of the things that are in your folder. I believe it was on the left hand side. I will start my inspirational insights on channel 40 in May. So look for those. I believe they're going to come on just before the 700 Club somewhere around that time. So it'll be an inspirational moment every Tuesday because it's Tuesdays with Tuesday. We gonna wear this name out. Since my daddy gave it to me, we gonna wear it out, okay? And so also my epic trainings will start. Uh, they are just that. There'll be trainings on women in leadership, women in ministry, uh, epic communication, epic image. Everything is about epic, epic relationships. It will be for singles as well as couples. Um, I just believe uh, God has certainly given me a passion for relationships. I mean, early on to see relationships be successful and to be healthy. And so the uh, one area that I do still coach in is relationships. I don't I'm not a business coach. I am a business consultant. And so, as we said earlier, I like to just tell you, this is what you need to do, and, and let's create a strategy to get it done. And that's what Vision Focus helps you to do. In October will be my first women's conference. I know, he's just stretching me, y'all. So it'll be my first business conference. It is called FIRE, Unite to Ignite. So it's bringing women together, women of all ages, females, I should say, Three generation, three, 3G ministry, three generation ministry. So young girls, young girls, teenagers, young women and adult women for sure enough, grown women. So it's three generations. So if your daughter, your mother and you, whatever those three generations are, we are going to meet in this building again and have workshops and messages for each of those ages because we're all being affected. So 3G women's ministry, unite to ignite. It to be put on fire, right? And last thing, my table is out there. Uh, this is my first independent writing. Uh, my book, Waiting, Mastering the Unavoidable. Anybody waiting on something? Something. And so today was even a part of answering one of your waits, and I believe that. And so I want to invite you to get your book. I will autograph it, and I'm telling you now. You get this now, and I sign it, and I'm all over with this. And the next book, y'all going to be like, y'all got her first book. And so please, please invest in this. I literally, when I started, when I ordered these, I think, and I launched this in September, and I have six books left, six or eight books out there. I don't know how many, but that's it. And the next time I release this, it'll be the next version of it, but it'll also be an audio book. I want to encourage anyone that has a book in them, take it to the next level and make it audio. So people can pop that MP4 in or MP3 in, they can get that CD, whatever it is, download it so that they can listen to it as they go. As y'all see, this is serious, right? And waiting is serious, but God can answer your wait. And I give my personal testimonies in here of how I've waited on things. And one of those waitings is today of being able to move forward in my own vision. I have invested in everyone else's from church to friends to other conferences across the country, helping plan and be a participant. But God saw fit for 2016. Me and uh, my, my dear, dear sister friend, I call her T Wit, Coach T, we, I, we had this conversation, man, 2015 was crazy in both of our lives. How can he top that? And so you come into this first quarter and things were moving slow. I'm like, God, how do you put me up here? And now I'm feeling like, I'm waiting again, but I understood it. 
It's just, it's a matter of manifestation. Everybody say, there is an appointed time for my vision to come to pass. How many of you say you have a big vision? Every part of that vision can't happen at the same time. You know, even if you're, you're pregnant with twins or triplets or anything else, they got to each come out one at a time, right. right? Unless they're conjoined, 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 conjoined. And they trying to separate them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you got to push each thing out at its appointed time. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of each chapter in this book, there is an opportunity for you to journal. And just what have you learned? Even as, um, as Dave said, you know, retweeting this, re hashtagging it. This is what I gained from this conference. And let's get some excitement. And those will actually become some of my statistics and testimonies to use as we promote this again next year. I've already asked people next year. I've already talked to my marketing person. I need someone here to talk to us about marketing and PR and genuine branding. What does that look like? Business branding, social media and things. And so I've already started talking to people, y'all. Y'all like, she ahead of the game. There is a sheet in there where you are going to walk out here today starting to create your vision statement, your mission statement, and your purpose statement. So go ahead and take that out. Because when we get to that, I want you to be ready. For many of us, this is what our lives look like. This is what our thoughts look like. Now, I'm going to tell y'all how good God is. I sat back there and he told me to do this because I ain't this smart. He says, this is what our thoughts look like. All of these visions, all of these dreams, all of these desires, all of these, and it's clouded. All you need is a refreshing touch of a new word. And watch that thing. Can I use your water? Start to clear up. Give me somebody else's. Give me the whole picture. How about that? <laughs> Because that's how deep it is for some of us sometimes. We just need to keep adding. Keep getting new information. Keep getting new information. And watch that thing start to clear up. And this is what you have done by coming here today. What started cloudy has started to clear up. And that is what you investing in yourself will do whether it's working with Dave for social media, working with me for the areas of your life in different areas of training and equipping you for life and purpose, working with uh, Coach T on your identity, whatever it is, working with Phil about your money, getting, now listen, I purposely brought these people so we could connect with them and grow their business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's working with Lori to get these bodies in shape, I contend. We talking about we gonna run and have a vision. Can't take a flight of stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Just wore out, tired on the first landing. So we have to be fit in our bodies. Or if it's Shamar, so whatever it is, or even uh, Coach E, who deals with leadership. If you, I, I train on leadership. If you're a leader in your community, if you're a leader in your church, you need to understand how to be an effective leader. What does that look like when people are coming to you because you're the leader and you ain't trying to be bothered today, but you still have to deal with them? Mm -hmm. So this is what I want to bring to us today, living a deliberate life, bringing your vision into focus. What are we going to talk about today? We are going to discover our three W's, discover and define them. And, and all of your note sheets are in there. Please feel free to take notes. All of the handouts are in there, and there's a note section for you to take notes. Your who, your what, your why, and then how to handle the how. Everybody say how. how? Ain't, none of my business. Ain't none of my business. A lot of times you don't know how. You're not going to know how. But you have to keep doing the what. You have to keep dealing with the who. And, you, and it's okay. I don't what. Why do you have me doing this? Why? It's okay. The questions are okay. I want us to understand. Jesus asked questions. Why hast thou forsaken me? Well. If it's possible, can you take this cup? <laughs> and we get, feel like we shouldn't ask God questions. We shouldn't keep questioning. No, you keep questioning until you get a piece about what it is I'm supposed to do. I told you. Coaching, 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 consulting. God, and, and it, through this process, no, you are a consultant. God, what do you want me to do? 
what do you want me to do? I pressed his charity on the, on the elevator, said, did you pray for like six months for this to happen? No, but I did set three weeks aside, which is what I do at the end of every year to seek God for the following year. And what he typically gives me is a prophetic direction, not only for my life, but for the body. And I communicate that. But you know who, I, who eats on that word first? I'm the first partaker. And so I'm clear about my first purpose in the earth is the ministry of the gospel. But God has given me a vision that includes business. And ultimately, ultimately, I'm clear that my purpose is about advancing people. It's about advancing people. It's about bringing people into their purpose and their vision and it being clear. You are not meant to continue to be stumbling for the rest of your life about what you're supposed to do. What should have took the children 11 days to go through the wilderness took them 40 years. Because they kept asking why, why, what, what, murmuring and complaining. Any mur don't raise your hand. Any murmurers or complainers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the differences between vision, purpose, and mission. They're all different. And we're going to make sure that you leave out of here today knowing what they are. Then we're going to look at blockers and branding. Branding, at personal branding at a different level. Every last one of you, as, as Dave has showed us, you have a brand on social media. What is that? This little dress right here, everybody know that's Tuesday. Everybody know Doc Tuesday and that little brooch. Everybody know that. Everybody know that. So if you run across brooches, because I can't find them, I have to order them. So if you find somewhere where brooches are, let me know. But everybody knows this, that this is me. This is my brand. Dr. Tuesday. I know people call me Dr. Tate, but I was strategic about not calling myself Dr. Tate. So when God sent them and I put the last name with two, see, Tuesday ain't going to change, but Tate going to change. <laughs> ah, you got to be strategic got to be strategic. So we're going to look at that and we're going to look at the it's, the it's, defining your it, writing your it, declaring your it, birthing your it, getting to it, expecting it, and becoming it. This is what we're going to do. We're going to look at the it's, not the monster, not the monster it. So here we are. Here we are defining your W's. I typically walk around when I speak, but I wanted to be very mindful today of getting you the information that you need. Your who is about your personality. Who am I? This is about your personality. Your personality, let me help you, you're born with it. You're born with it. You're born with that personality. Can you improve it, please? <laughs> I need to work on mine too. And so that is what your personality, and your personality is tied to your vision and your purpose. As we look at, um, at branding, who you are personally or even in business, this is who you are. This is who you are. And, it's, and a brand is a logo. A brand is a logo. A brand is a logo. Branding is you becoming that, that every time people see me, they see when I have on one of them little 50s dresses, they're like, oh my God, that's you. When this little thing was created and I posted, everybody's like, oh my God, that is you. If you follow certain people, and, and, and I'll, I'll just use T.D. Jakes, he has that mic, that towel in his hand. As soon as you see it, you know who it is. If you follow religious leaders. So that's a brand image. And so branding is you becoming that. So anytime someone sees it, they know, oh, that's such and such as event. Dr. Tuesday, they know that. Also, I wanted you to understand, I, I had to start thinking, I saw so, a lot of activity recently uh, on social media about branding and, and different things. And the Holy Spirit, and, and so God says to me, when we think about branding, it really is about your character. It's really about your character. This is who I am when no one's looking. I think Shamar said that earlier. Branding is about the integrity of what you say you're going to deliver, you deliver every time. And you become that brand. You become that thing. So this is uh, your what is your vision, your intellect, your what 
It, it starts up here. The vision for your what it is you wanted to do started up here. So it's about you thinking about it, meditating on it so you can become it. Your why is the emotional buy-in. It's about your purpose. Listen, I'm very clear that my, my why is tied to Martha Jane Tate. That's my mom. Mom clear that my why is about those four little great nieces. Because though their parents are doing okay, I want to be able to sew into them and make sure when they want to take piano lessons or tap or whatever it is, that where their parents can't, I can come in. Or just be a blessing even if they can't. You got to, your why is going to get you up in the morning. Your why is going to get you up to the point that you are like, I don't feel like doing this, okay, but I got to do this. So let me give you an example. Someone is saying their why is that they want to give a life that is better to their children. But you keep letting your children interfere with you accomplishing your purpose. So is it really your children? Because if it was your children, you would say, Mommy can't do that today. But we can do that on. But Mommy, no, 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 no. No, we're going to do it on this day. Your why keeps you focused. It will keep you focused. When, when all of this planning was going forth for this conference, and things kept happening and finding glitches and like, okay, God, isn't the registration isn't going the way I wanted it to go. But why are you doing this? You're doing this to advance people, to help people, to help people find purpose. And it was, it's wonderful to have people that agree with your vision, that buy into it. Even, um, I think I talked to Dave. I know I talked to Tamigo. I talked to Shamar. And it was, if it's two people, we comment. If it's 20, like I said earlier. So it's about my why is to help people. And I'm clear about that. Do people always get it? Probably not. But my, I have a great passion for people, hence relationships. How is tied to your value? It's tied to your mission. How am I going to do what it is I am called to do? This is a great opportunity when you're identifying your, your W's of taking an assessment of 20 people in your life and asking them the questions. How do you see me? How do you see me? When you think of me, what do you think of? What is it that I'm good at? What do you see me doing? Ask, them, ask, the, ask people the questions that you're not sure about because that'll start to establish your brand. One thing anybody will tell you, I would think, Tuesday's a dynamic teacher. I'm not saying that about myself because I'm going to teach till you get it. She's a good speaker. I'm not going to say, I guess I'm okay, great, whatever. But people tell you what you should be doing. We over here trying to do something else, and it's, it's over there. There's a place called there. That's where you need to get to. <laughs> there is a place called there, because that is where your wealth is. That is where your peace is. That is where your stability is. That is where your advancement is. That is where your prosperity is. But we keep trying to do this, maybe because we see somebody else doing it, and they're successful at it. But that's not what you're called to do. That's not what you're called to do. So this is where we are. Then what is the difference between vision, purpose, and mission? Passion, I need you to hear me. Get this, write it down. Passion will lead you to purpose, but it will not keep you at purpose. Passions change. Passions change. Passions are tied to your purpose. They are tied to your purpose. For example, I have a passion for youth, but youth are not my purpose only in the kingdom. My purpose is people, helping people find purpose, vision, success. But I'm very effective. God allows me to be very effective with youth, very effective. And I'm grateful, always have been. Youth actually keep me honest. I believe that. They keep me honest. And so understanding purpose does not change, but passions do. Purpose does not change, but passions do. Vision. And I'm going to speak slow. I will send you my notes. I mean, actually, you have them, but vision. What I want to be and what do I want to be known as? I'm going to show you guys mine in a second. What vision? What do I want to be? 
and what do I want to be known as? How do I want to be seen? That is vision. A great way to start your vision statement is I will be or I am, or ABC company is your company. I have a personal vision statement and I have a business vision statement. You should have one for your marriage. If you're married, keeps you on task. For your family, I believe it. For your finances, what's your vision? I'm a multimillionaire, billionaire, why not? Why not? Why not me? Why not you? Purpose. Why? Why are you here? Why do you want to do what it is you want to do? Why? Why do you want to do it? Who is it going to help? Your purpose has to go past money. It has to go past money. Because when you're not making none, you will give up on it. <laughs> When you're not at the place where you want to be, you will walk, you will, the desire will be to walk away from it. That's how I know people often are not walking and living in purpose. Just because you're in purpose doesn't mean things are going to be easy. That's not what it means. But you're going to stick with it. You're going to finish strong. You're going to see it until the end. You're going to wait till the next answer. When it was time for me to transition from Mary Kay, literally in five months, I grew my business and became a director in five months and earned, earned my first car in five months. And I was doing the show enough in Mary Kay. Well, thought in everything in me, I was supposed to go to national and be at that level. I remember the day, I remember the day, Phil, when it was clear I was supposed to let that business go and send that car back. Send my car back? What am I gonna drive? But I was clear, I was clear. My national directors that, that mentored me, my director, no one understood. My team, what are you doing? But I knew that's what I was supposed to do. When I left my job, corporate America, six figures, 15, seven, let me see now, I was 30, so I'm 30, 49. Jeez, really? So I'm oh, that old. Okay, in that long. So 18 years now. When I left my job, my family thought I had lost my mind. They thought, actually, I had been fired. They were all talking. Maybe she was fired and didn't want to tell us. <laughs> but that's what they thought. But I was clear. I was slated to be a vice president. I worked for GTE, which is now Verizon. It was WorldCom, and then it became Verizon. And so I worked for them. They met with, I met with my assigned mentor. I just quite, I don't know how I feel about people assigning you a mentor, but I met with my assigned mentor in Atlanta. We sat at a breakfast in Buckhead. She told me what I was going to be doing for the next two years, three years to move up the ladder. A part of that, I, we all have to have deal breakers. A part of that was, she said, you will at, have times where you have to let people go. They can have 20 years, 30 years, 10 years, be vested. But you're going to have to release them. You give them their package and you send them on your way. You have to separate yourself from the emotion of it. I, I, I thought, I said, I don't know if I could do that. How do you, these people got houses, they got kids. That was God's way of showing me that's not the path I'm going to take you on. Because that's not who you are. Am I able to make hard choices? Absolutely. But that's not one I wanted to be, have to make. But when she said that, something in me started stirring up, that I started going back to say, God, is this really what you want me to do? Am I really supposed to be moving up this corporate ladder? And I'm just going to be transparent. At that time in GTE, in their business units, there were three to five African Americans in the vice president position a national Fortune 500 company across the world, and I would have been the first black female. Everyone thought I was crazy. My peers, my managers, everyone, but I knew I was supposed to transition. Let me just tell you the story, it's in my book. I stepped out and walked away from it all, and I kept saying I wouldn't mind living in New York. I've always said I wouldn't mind living in New York. I'll, I'll move to New York. In this transition, because these words are in the atmosphere, I get a call from New York to be a director over this department. I would have been making as much as I would have been making as a vice president. But when you do the cost of living, <laughs> to live in New York, and that's what I did. And so I decided to not take the position. 
I don't know, some astronomical number close to 300,000. But I decided, nope, not going to do it. Okay. My brother was like, well, if, if you feel that's not what you're supposed to do, but sis, I don't know. I said, I'm going to pray about it. I let the job go. Two months later, I'm sitting in my office in my house at my desk. Behind me is my TV. I see a building on fire. And I turn around, I said, certainly this could not be real. A building's on fire? The Twin Towers in New York? So uh, like all of us, we start praying. I'm like, oh my God, these people, what is going on? We're watching the news. About two weeks later, they started running the companies that was in the building, in Tower 1 and Tower 2. I remember talking to the man who interviewed me on the phone, where should I live? Live in New Jersey. Don't live here. Take the ferry over. Okay, and well, you'll be working on the 35th floor in Tower 2. I see the list of the companies where I would have been working was in that building. Had I chased the money, had I chased the money in living in New York and going to the Broadway plays and walking down, you know, Fifth Avenue, had I chased the money, what it looked like and being the first person in my family to make that kind of money and live in that type of way. Oh, I had planned it out when he first told me what the salary was, honey. <laughs> I had planned it out. But all along the way, God was setting it up that I did the cost analysis, Dave, to see, oh, this only really gives me about 30,000, maybe 20, 30, 30, 50,000. Somebody would say, girl, that's an extra 30, 50,000. However, that's far away from my mother. I started thinking, okay, if I need to get here, I gotta get on the plane. That's how he has me think. Do not ignore the indicators. Don't ignore the indicators that are telling you, just hold up, wait a minute. And I remember being on my knees saying, oh my God. And so certainly I thought, well, maybe that day I couldn't have went to work. Maybe that day I could have missed the ferry. Maybe that all these may, well, you don't know, but he knew. He knew. So you have to be clear about what it is you are to be doing and consistently keep speaking it. Why it has to be more than the money. It has to be more than the money. Your mission is your what, your list, I want you to hear this. Your what and your why equals how. Your what and your why equals how. What I'm to do, why I'm to do it equals the how. Because as you keep going, the how will become clear. The how will become clear. How did I know doing fashion shows, you know, in the 90s and putting events together and for sickle cell and all of this, that God was teaching me then for other people how to do my own? Do you understand what I'm saying? All the hows, everything, all things really do work together for your good. They really do. He will use everything. I remember people telling me, God, ain't all that stuff you learned in corporate America, he, he don't need that. Yes, he does. In the church, that's what they were telling me. Yes, churches need vision. Churches need purpose. Churches need mission. Churches need to understand how to build infrastructure. All the same things that I do with businesses, I do with churches. Do not think that there is Anything that has happened in your life that God does not and will not use, if it was purposeful then, he'll use it now. He just may twist to do, put a little spin on it for you. So, think about this as I'm going to go back to purpose. What would you do for free? Every day you wake up, what would you do for free? If nobody paid you, getting paid is just icing on the top, butter baby. What would you wake up and do for free every day? I am about 90% sure your purpose is tied to that thought. If you can't think of anything you would do for free, I think th you probably should stay in your nine to five. Because that means you, you are tied to the check of someone else that could close their company tomorrow. But you're here today because you believe there's something else greater that's calling you to your own. A higher calling. Absolutely. Your mission, I want to say this. Vision is where brand is envisioned. Envisioned. Starts on the inside. Vision is where brand is envisioned. 
Purpose is where brand is aligned, but mission is where brand takes feet. It comes alive, it gets to moving. I want to say that um, purpose doesn't change. Mission, again, because it's the how, will change. It's the difference between you traveling. If you were going to Michigan, there are several ways to get to Michigan from Indianapolis. You could decide to go 465 to 65 over the 94. You could decide to do that. Where you're going in Michigan does not move. The destiny does not change. Your purpose for going does not change. You could decide to take 465 to 69 over to Michigan. Let's say you're going to Detroit. Say you're going to Detroit. You can go both of those ways and get there. I don't know why you would take 465 to 65 to 94, because that's the other side of Michigan. That's the other side of the, of the hand. But the quickest way is 465 to 69 over. 14 and um, you're there. So destiny does not change. How is what changes. And it's okay. It's okay. So we just talked about this. I want you to um, pull out your vision statement, that sheet. And while you're doing that, I want to just give you a little tip that's not in this note. And it is this. You're a talent, a talent. A talent is a natural ability. You're born with it. It can be developed. Okay? Your skills are what you learn. So you go to a training and you learn a skill set. And you can certainly develop it. But gifts come from God. Gifts come from God. I want you to take a, a, a look at these mission statements from these three companies. Nike. To bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. Note, they do not talk about tennis shoes. They don't talk about tennis shoes. Starbucks, to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. Is coffee talked about? Don't, you, you have to, because it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Now they, now, who am I to tell Nike and Starbucks and eBay? I would say these are vision statements, but they call them mission statements. Actually, they call them branding, brand, brand mission statements, and that's fine. But um, this is what they do. So when you're thinking about it, that's what I want you to consider. I, I want to also challenge us to be careful about, I did a post, and I, I think this is what uh, Dave was talking about. I did a post a few months ago called being the jack of all, and I didn't say the master of none. Because people will tell you you're doing too much. My statement was, who tells T.D. Jakes you can't be an author, a pastor, a preacher, a producer, you can't be a real estate mogul, you can't, he's a coach too, you can't be all of these things. Remember when he wrote uh, uh, gift cards? Mm -hmm. Who's going to tell him that? Who tells Joyce Meyer she can't be all those things? Who tells John Maxwell you can't be a pastor for the season he was pastoring, training, coaching, speaking? Who tells you that? Your vision typically has more than one strand. There were four streams in the Garden of Eden, five streams in the Garden of Eden. You should try to have five in your life. Amen. Do not let people try to tell you what you should or should not be doing. The challenge becomes, what am I to be doing now? So that becomes being steel. What is going to make you money so you can advance the other things? Temp someone talked about doing something, they're doing a job temporarily right now. Absolutely. If you sub just to advance, you, you're working your job to pay for your vision. That's okay. You're doing something on the side just to pay for that and sustain, your, sustain you while you're building up the other thing. That is okay. I, if I would have let someone tell me, well, you're a minister, you shouldn't write a book. 
You're a minister, you can't be a coach. You're a minister, you can't be a consultant. How can you be a relationship coach when you're single? Because I've had enough failed relationships. I've had enough relationships that didn't take it to the end. But by that same token, as strange as it may be, married people come to me for, for counseling and coaching in relationships. Because it's not about me, I keep them in the word. Mm -hmm. So use your gifts. God has downloaded wisdom into you to speak into situations. He's downloaded that. There is wisdom in you. Sis, what's your name? Oh, Lord. Okay, God. They're here. Tara. Okay. All right. So great deal of wisdom in you. Great deal of wisdom in you. People come to you for advice. You cannot shrink back. Because the truth is, a lot of times, our gifts and our abilities we use on other people, and then we get nervous when it comes to us because they're not for you. But don't shrink back from the wisdom you have been given. Don't shrink back from the wisdom you have, because there's money in wisdom, Solomon. Your kind heart, Laura, it, it, you're, okay, your health is great, and that's good, your strategy, but it is your genuine kindness. It is your genuine kindness that even people have probably taken advantage of. It is your genuine kindness that he's going to use. That's where it's going to come from. Lean to your strengths. Lean to your strengths. So we have this wonderful piece of paper here. So I want you to take this out. And we're not going to take the whole time because you can take it home. So this is the vision of Vision Focus Group. It's a worldwide firm that provides clients with results-driven custom consulting and tailored training which are designed to uh, streamline efficiency, increase productivity, and internal synergy. What I really want to jump down to is mission, to create and provide diverse opportunities for personal business, spiritual and professional development and growth. This is why I can do relationship coaching, because it's about personal and spiritual. So people may not know your vision. They may not know your purpose. They may not know your mission. But as long as you know it, you can stand on it Amen. and not allow yourself to be shaken. Amen. My slogan, everywhere I go, I help people bring their vision into focus. And my, it just so happens my business name is in my slogan. So I want you to think about, and you don't have to, we, we, matter of fact, we won't, because you, you really have to think through this. And it's going to take you a few times to erase this. I don't know how to da, 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 da. But most of the time, what I give people on my elevator pitch is my slogan. So what do you do? I help people bring their vision into focus by using strategies for success, for infrastructure development. Well, what does that mean? And then, and one of the things I want to encourage you, put a word in it that makes somebody say, now, what does that mean? Not because they like, that is confusing. But it draws them. It draws them. Identity coaching, what is that? What are you trying to tell me? I don't have an identity? Well, no, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> this is what we're going to help you do. Do you understand what I'm saying? OK. What? Uh, that, she's gone. She had to go take care of the baby. But that dang on Shamar, she's something. So, I want, my goodness, she just, she wrapped, I mean, she can just come out like the top of her head like that all the time. So, I want to talk about site recovery. She touched on this. You have to remove your blockers. I'm going to give you these very quick because I want to honor your time. There can be many blockers, but blockers are typically a solid thing. They are a solid thing that is hard to move. And it's probably been there a long time. It's like plaque on your teeth. You've got to get a drill to it. And you've got to go back a couple of times a year. Blockers are oppressors. They weigh on you. They're heavy. And so off the top, fear, self-image, and insecurities. Fear, self-image, and insecurities are blockers. Everybody has insecurities about something, but you cannot let them control you. I will be honest, for me, my fear was the fear of success. It wasn't failure, because I trust God. 
I trust God that even if I fail, I'm going to fall forward. But my fear was success. Why? Because I knew there were people I was going to have to leave behind. There were relationships I was going to have to end. There are people that were going to feel like, oh, you think you such a, such a much or such. That's just it. You're not going where I'm going. I love you, but we're not meant to take this journey together. At the, at the uh, Bank One Tower downtown where uh, the Skyline is, there's an elevator specifically for the Skyline Club. Then there's some other elevators over here. Everybody don't get to go up there. You cannot feel bad that there are people. Now, look, I ain't talking about y'all leaving y'all spouses. I ain't saying that. <laughs> I'm talking about them friends. There'll be some family members. And, and listen. If I'm, I'm OK, this is for free. If your spouse is not in the line and you're a praying person, you need to pray. If you're the go getter, you're the D and you're making it happen and they're an S, let them be they S because they probably just want to show up and be your Hercules or Herculette. Quit trying to make them be what you want them to be. That was free. <laughs> Their part in your vision and your purpose very well may be to be your Elizabeth or your Jonathan to encourage you and support you and to cheerlead you. But you keep trying to make them walk with you in it. And they may be uncomfortable in that, or at least for a season. So your blockers, inhibitors. Inhibitors are things that slow you down and interfere with you going and m making a, a decision or an action. It could be words, inhibitors. It could be um, people. It could be uh, negative people. It could be your resources. I don't have enough money. I can't do this. I can't do that. Let me tell y'all something. When I started planning this conference, I literally, that day, because none had came through, I literally had 82 cents in the bank when I sat down and started planning this conference. We here and everything paid for it. Glory to God. So you can't let money be it. There are things you need money for. It's useful, but you can't let that stop you. You just start moving and watch things catch up with you. And so uh, procrastination, that's the biggest inhibitor. It's you. Get off, get off social media. Schedule your social media time. I now, social media gets to, an, well, an hour on social media in the morning, two hours for emails, and I'm, I'm done. Now, texting, depending on who you are, I might, you know, engage you, but I'm not the one, and I can't do a whole bunch of long talking. As much as these sister friends are my sister friends, we do not talk on the phone a long time. Let's do coffee or something, and that time is set aside. So, and then you have impairers. Impairs are things that limit you because they are not whole. Oh, good. Things that limit you because they are not whole. People with a poverty mentality, that's too expensive for Indianapolis. Indianapolis ain't ready for that. And maybe you need to go to Chicago or Benton Harbor or Ohio. You cannot let impairers keep you from getting to your purpose. It could be an impairment, it could be your health, because you're not whole. And so it, that health thing keeps getting in your way. But what can you do even in that place, even in the place where things are not perfect or the best condition to move forward yet? Now, let me say this. Uh, Shamar touched on this. Um, sight. Sight is one of your senses. Sight is one of your five senses. Sight is what makes you aware of light. Okay? Sight is what makes you aware of light. But it is our eyes that sense the light and we have sight. Many of us, it's how we see things. You don't see yourself successful as much as you talk about it. You don't see yourself successful. You don't see yourself as a, a millionaire. I thank you for the six-figure income. I've done that, and I'll get that back real soon here. 
But for me to really make the impact that I desire to make and I believe God wants me to make, it requires more. Mm -hmm. I don't really care who's going to be the president because I trust God. Now, as somebody I absolutely don't want to be the president. (laughs) However, you have to believe in yourself. You got to start seeing things differently. So in my book, I talk about how to meditate. Meditate is not, meditate literally means to murmur aloud softly. I'm great, I'm awesome. I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm gonna get this deal. I'm going out today and I'm gonna close this deal. I am, I am created for success, I'm created for wealth. It's, it's, you gotta murmur it. Who do you hear speak the most? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, but who are you going to hear the most speak faith is you. So if you're speaking doubt, and the study was done, for every one word spoken, for every one negative word spoken, it takes 10 to 12 positive words to reverse it. You have got to stop speaking negative. I'm I'm too big. I'm too fat. Okay, whatever. Maybe true. I got a health program for you. If you want to lose some weight, I'll help you work on that too. You hear what I'm saying? Stop saying these things about yourself. I'll never be this, I'll never be that. Or such and such said. And let me help you with something. Who said that something they see something negative, they delay, delete it on, on Facebook? Who somebody said that earlier? Somebody said that. I agree. Mm-hmm. Honey, I love I and, and I, I didn't typically block people. I didn't. I'm like, whatever you got to say. But let me tell you something. You're on there and it could just be a flash and you seeing somebody like, did they say that? Delete. Delete. Something as simple, I tend to be very transparent. She read my bio, I'm real talk, and I'm transparent. Things that were spoken over this conference or somebody put something on Facebook, I deleted it. Oh, that's too expensive. Or Really? $69 for powerful people? Now, now let me ask y'all a question. Would you have paid more? Raise your hand. Because, but we wanted to get it in your hands. We wanted to get it to you. So you all should applaud yourself for being wise, for investing in you. So if it was spoken, I deleted it. It could have been on my YouTube channel. I deleted it because one, I didn't want other people who may be in the, in the balance. Should I, should I? Because people don't always go research for themselves, do they? So they take that person or person saying something and they run with it. And so you have to guard your brand. Why she always, I put a post out yesterday with my plastic cap on and no makeup and no lashes. And somebody was like, I can't believe you did that. Why? I know, um, let me help y'all with something. Brand is about image, but I'm who I am. Whether I'm on Facebook with lashes and all of this, or the wig, or the big afro, I'm the same person. That's why it has to be authentic. Who you are has to be authentic. You have to grow in that place of confidence. So let me jump on. Um, Applying the correctors. I'm going to say this real quick. Prisms. Anybody had glasses? They had to put prisms. Prisms, actually, I had to have prisms. And one day I woke up and I was healed. I didn't have to have them no more. But Mm -hmm. prisms trick your eyes Mm -hmm. into thinking that you are looking, both eyes are looking at the same thing because what prisms do is give you double vision. Mm -hmm. Double-minded people can't go nowhere. They're unstable. You need prisms. You need something that is going to redirect your sight and bring it into a line that you are centered, focused on whatever it is you are called to do. Whatever you have in your heart and purpose to do. Because if not, you're in different places all the time. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Maybe I'm doing this. Maybe there. And to some people it may. But if you get your vision, purpose, and mission together, it may look like one thing to people, but you know what you're doing is living by that. Everything I do, I don't care if I'm writing, if I'm coaching, if I'm training, if I'm consulting, it is all about my purpose, which is to help people. And people work within companies. So even though I may be in a business, I'm still doing, if I'm giving, helping them to understand how to have synergy, 
as a team, they got to know those personality types. They got to know their, their uh, emotional intellect or their intellect intellect. They got to know those things. Or if I'm doing it with a church, their spiritual intellect. You are moved by those things. So I have to bridge all of that together. It's still people, but ultimately it's going to help the business. It's going to help the church. Does that make sense? Okay, so I want you to check this out. This blessed me. Um, so here we are. We're defining it. We're casting it and we're preparing for it. As you are defining your vision, as you are defining your vision, you have to write it. You have to make it plain. What you have to understand is your vision keeps you focused, but it's really about how other people see you. That's why it says write the vision, make it plain, so when others read it, they'll run with it. You need people to run with it. The, what what um, Shamar showed us, that other people take it and start referring you. They're running with your vision. And so you have to define it and make it clear. I absolutely believe in vision boards. I have one personally. I have one for business. When We'll work from your sheet. As you are defining it, you want to make sure that between the time of defining and casting, there is preparation. Between defining and casting, there's preparation. Between casting, it, there's prep, you're still preparing for it. At every stage, there's constantly preparation. Revisiting, is this really who I am? Is this still who I am? Is this, it could be next year, it could be three years. I encourage um, my business, persons that I do business with, is this still what you are here to do? Is this still what you're doing? Are you still doing this? When McDonald's started doing McRibs. I was a little challenged with McRibs. You do hamburgers. Who am I to tell McDonald's they can't do McRibs? Who, who, who am I to say that? When they started now doing breakfast all day. First of all, what is McDonald's doing serving breakfast? When they first started doing that, you're a hamburger place. But they kept coming back and revisiting. And I'm one of those people that can eat breakfast all day. So if I want to stop by and get a little breakfast hash round or something, I can do that. So you constantly, you will be doing that. I encourage you to do that. And a good business consultant that you're working with will help you to come back and revisit to make sure you're still doing what it is you're supposed to be doing. I want to talk to you about casting it. I said earlier what meditation was. You're thinking on it. You're speaking it. You're posting it. And I'm not talking about on Facebook. I'm talking about it's in front of you. You're looking at that, and you're saying that this is what you're going to do. Then you have to start moving in that direction. Do not get preparation uh, paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Paralysis. Preparation paralysis. You're preparing, 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 and you're never doing anything. Mm -hmm. You have to do something. You have to start doing something. Be mindful in these seasons of who you're sharing your vision with. You can't share with everybody because everybody's not going to support it. So understanding that your vision will put you amongst other people, but a prepared vision will move, put you out front. A well-prepared, documented vision with a business plan and all the things that we talked about will move you out front of everyone else and set you apart. We talked about that. Living a purposeful, fulfilled life, you have to get it. You got to be clear about it. You got to get focused. You got to get help if you need help. That's what you're doing today. Get real about it. Get ready for it and get moving. Be clear that there will be challenges. Just get real. There are going to be challenges. And you can't get scared of the challenges. You don't know what they're all going to be. Some of them we've told you today. But just be clear about that. There will be challenges, but you don't have to succumb to the challenges. And this is what I really wanted to land here. Expect fallout. Expect loss. Expect haters, which is really jealous people. I remember saying to someone, I don't understand why people are jealous. What is that about? I don't get jealousy. I don't get jealousy because I absolutely believe there's more than enough to go around. So I don't understand that. To the point that it would go over my head if somebody would be like, such and such is jealous. I'm like, jealous of what? So understand that all those things are going to be there. And expect it. You just don't have to 
succumb to it. You do not have to succumb. They expect that it's going to take time. Shamar and or Dave talked about the process. The process, you have to go through it. Some of that process is what we may deem as failure. But if you learn, let me help you. If you learn from it, it's not failure. If you learn from it, it's not failure. If you know a better way, you're like, okay, I figured that. Okay, this is what I need to do different next time. That's not failure. That's not failure. So don't even allow yourself to get caught in that. Now this is going to hurt me because I got a feeling this one isn't going to work either. Can you click on, it's not. What this is about is Bruce Lee saying, live the vision, L become the water. Become the water, it's so powerful. He talks about becoming the water. Water forms to whatever it's put in. It becomes that. And so where I want to end with this is, as I started thinking about this, he actually, be says, he actually says in this, and you can find it on YouTube, he says, become water, baby. <laughs> I love Bruce Lee. Become water, baby. And become your vision. You have to become your vision. You have to become your brand. That little dress and Dr. Tuesday, that's me. And you guard it. Become the solution for a problem. We've heard many people say that. Become the fix for a thing. The little man who, uh, who did the little post-it notes, 3M, I mean, really? He put some glue on the back of paper. Why didn't I think of that? All of these things. Becoming the solution to a problem. Become water. Hear me. Let every negative and spoken word go. Do not form to that. The implied word, the implied thought, let it roll off your back like water. Let every poverty, oppressive mindset go. Every one of them. All of those statements, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, uh, can't make ends meet. All of those things you have to, and don't allow people to say it. I'm quick, the hand, uh-uh, no, I'm not, don't, no, we don't get to talk like that. No, 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 we don't do that. It's okay. Remember the no? That's your vision, that's your dream, and you can't, it's your baby. It's something I said to someone about this conference. Yes, this is my baby, and I haven't been fortunate enough in the natural to, yet to have a child, but I have plenty of nieces and nephews. And when they're infants, now my niece has four, and by this fourth one, you barely have to watch. She like, oh, you ain't got to wash your hands. She know, okay. <laughs> but that first one, you got folks washing their hands. You're using hand sanitizer. You're using wipes. You're guarding. You're bleaching their toys. Anything they put on their mouth, you're boiling it. You're doing the whole nine because it's your baby. You have to guard your baby. And because this is my baby, whether it was the conference or the speakers, I just did not allow anyone to say anything. Because it wasn't just me or the conference, it's everyone that's a part of it. It's you. I didn't know you from Eve or Adam, but you were a part, you're a baby in this to me. You're, you're the, the, whether you're the toy, you feel what I'm saying, the bottle, whatever part you're playing in this, I wanted to make sure that nothing was spoken over this that would impact this day. So maybe that's what you felt, Sister Charity. Become the water. If you're not liquid, be ice. If you're not H2O in the form of liquid, be H2O in ice. There's someone that needs you to be strong and stable. That's what ice does. There's someone who uh, is hoping for a change, because that's all water did was change its form. Someone needs to see that you are walking in hope, and so you will bring hope to them that you are operating as a change agent. If you can't be water, you can't be ice, be steam. Be the cleanser to somebody. Be the purifier to somebody. Be the detox to somebody. Become your vision. Live your vision. Somebody might, you know, one of the things about losing weight is, um, you know, about steam. You sit in the, the steam room, all of those toxins come out, you can lose weight. You can lose weight. 
So I'm going to challenge you to let go of some weights. Amen. Let go of some weights. Let go of doubt. Let go of fear. Let go of procrastination. Let go of those blockers, those impairs, those inhibitors. Let go of it. And I contend from a six-figure salary, literally overnight, overnight. Besides, for a year and a half, I lived off savings and investments. So if you can do that, that's what you need to do. I had no idea what God, at that moment, the day it became clear I was supposed to leave, I had no idea. I'm like, what am I leaving to do? What am I leaving to do? That was 15 years ago. I have not missed a beat. I mean it. I think I'm still cute. He will take care of you when you know, whatever your faith is, when you know that you are doing what you have been created and called to do. Literally overnight bringing in thousands of dollars a month to nothing. Thank God I had enough sense to save and to invest for a year. When I say to you that the month that money ran out, I was hostessing at a restaurant. I was hostessing. Hi, may I find your seat? How many? That's what I was doing. A lady came in who I knew from church. She said, whatever happened with you working to train and teach etiquette? Because I've been certified and have been certified as a professional uh, etiquette trainer, as well as social skills for like youth and things. And I said, I'm really believing that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm just not sure how to you know, make inroads with it. And she said, do this. Had never done it. She said, complete this art. She said, contact my assistant on Monday, complete this RFP, submit it to Indiana Housing Agency, and I'm going to get you in to work with the housing of all of their housing communities to work with women coming off of welfare that need to go to work. And, we, and you can train their kids too on social skills, professional skills for the mothers and then the children. The month the money was running out, he will take care of you. He will take care of you. And so we're going to end on this note with you declaring some I am statements. I'm going to have you stand up. Would you do me a favor? Can you find this on YouTube? It's literally called Bruce Lee Become Water. I'm done. Thank you, sweetheart. I love them. They are super and duper. Say, I am, I am great. Grace. I am, I am awesome. awesome. I am, I am fearfully, fearfully, wonderfully, wonderfully awesomely, awesomely, perfectly, perfectly made. made. I am, I am created, created for this. For this. I, am I am more than, more than a, conqueror. a conqueror. I can, I can do, all do all things through my belief, through my belief in my believer. Yeah. I am, I am going, places. going places. I am, I am destined, destined for, greatness. for greatness. I am filled with greatness. I, filled with greatness. I am, am debt-free. Debt free. I, am. I am walk about, walk about. With, a with a credit score of 800 or more. more. Y'all play too much. <laughs> I am, I am. Fearfully. fearfully, I keep saying this, awesomely, awesomely. made. There's no greater work. There's no greater the, work. Work the work that God did when he made me. When he made me. I am, I am this, this for that. For that. Whatever, that is, Whatever that is, I am that. I am that. And I'm going to do it. And I'm do I, am I am all, all and will be, and will be all, all that I was created to be. I, created I am destined to, to, complete to complete my assignment. My assignment. I will not Leave this earth, leave this earth until, until I have fulfilled, I have fulfilled the, call, the call, the purpose, the, purpose, the, destiny, the destiny, the vision, the, vision, the, mission, the mission of, of my, my life. life. I am, I am great, great because, because greatness, greatness is in me. Is in me. Amen. I do my I am statements every day every day that 800 credit score or more i say it i don't even know what that look like phil <laughs> hallelujah but i say it i say it you have to start speaking that greatness into your life yes. 
The, the word says, unless the seed, these words that come out of your mouth fall to the ground and die, you got to wait for the process. Well. Mm -hmm. It cannot produce. Mm -hmm. and, but when it produces, it will produce more than what it was when it came out of your mouth. I want you to hear this and see this. The, Become water, baby. Any questions for me? You can have a seat while he's bringing it up. Any questions for me? Water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. <laughs> Be water, my friend. Uh -huh. Become. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Become. Become the thing that somebody needs. Everybody needs water. You can't live without it. Right. Is your vision something, charity, that people can live without? Oh, no. Is your vision something that people can live without? Is your vision something that people can. Is it? Is it? Is your vision, is your business something that people can live without? Is your vision some, it, do you, can, can anybody live without what you're bringing? No, I don't care if you think they can or somebody else is doing it. They cannot live without what you are bringing. I thank you all so much for helping me bring a vision to pass. You are awesome. Thank you. Please tell somebody, tweet it, keep tweeting it. As uh, Dave has given us instructions on what to do, um, amen.